Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me to today's Good Lord Tenant Feedback Ready product demo. I'm Katie, customer onboarding lead here at Good Lord, and I'm going to walk you through the changes that we have made to the platform to make it easy for you to comply with the new legislation changes which come into effect on the 1st of June this Saturday. If you haven't already moved over to the Tenant Feedback compliance settings, don't worry, we will be automatically switching on all the updated compliant features so they are ready for you on the 1st of June. This morning, we will be showing you all the updated features through a series of bite-sized video demonstrations, and there's plenty of supporting materials which we'll run through at the end. Before we get started and show you what we've updated, I'm going to do a quick recap on what's changed. The changes you will see will apply to all new tenancies that you create. Please make sure you review anything not sent for signing before the 1st of June and remove the fees. Good Lord will be sending you a list of these if you have any applicable in the week commencing the 3rd of June. So first up, we've developed a pre-qualification feature so that you can send a form directly to a tenant to capture key tenant information and view the response if captured. And we'll be showing you this shortly. Next, a recap on what's changed when you set up a tenancy. We've removed the fee option for AST and licensed tenancies to reduce errors and ensure your compliance. Holding deposits, previously called initial payments, and security deposits will be auto-generated and capped at the appropriate amount in line with the new law changes. As part of the tenant fee ban, the holding deposit can only be held for 15 days unless an extension is agreed in writing by the tenant. If you want to, you can agree a new deadline upfront and add the agreed date on the Create Tenancy page. This option will only be available for AST or licensed tenancies. This will appear in the Good Lord Tenant Fee Ban Tenancy Guide that the tenant signs and can also be added to custom guides upon request. To make things even easier, we've also made the Tenant Fee Ban Tenancy Guide available to all agencies that use their own custom contracts so they can be able to use this feature straight away. And finally, on a renewal of a tenancy, deposits will be calculated automatically and will show you if there's a refund owed to the tenant where applicable. Okay, so let's move on to contracts. Updated tenant fee ban compliant Good Lord and Arla AST templates have replaced the previous contracts and are ready to go. Customers who use their own contract templates and submitted their amendment requests by the 17th of May will be able to use their updated versions by the 1st of June at the latest. You can still submit changes to your custom contracts, but we cannot guarantee, guarantee these will be ready for the 1st of June. However, if you were able to, unable to do this, don't panic. You can still request to have the Good Lord contract templates enabled on your platform, or if you're an ARLA registered member, we can switch the ARLA templates on for you. On the tenant side of things, the tenant will now be able to view the tenancy agreement draft before paying their holding deposit. And this will also be available in the email from Good Lords. Wording about the tenancy in this draft will pull through to the Good Lord Tenant Fee Ban Tenancy Guide, which is available on your platform. And this wording can also be added to custom tenancy guides upon request. Okay, so finally, we're going to do a quick roundup of our payments update. You have the flexibility to turn off debit card payments at the moving money stage on either a tenancy or a company level. If the holding deposit charge is under £400, Good Lord will cover the 0.6% card cost of UK debit card payments. Okay, so now we're actually going to run you through what these changes look like on a live platform in bite-sized videos so that you can come away today with all the information that you need. And we'll be recording this session so you'll have them afterwards as well. So just bear with us. The, second, the video might take a few seconds to load and we're going to go on to the first one, which is pre-qualification. A key part of the holding deposits and the circumstances that you can retain a holding deposit. To help you with ensuring you capture key tenant information and suitability and have a record of what they say, we've developed a pre-qualification feature, which we're going to show you in a second, which means you can now send a form and applicants will be asked to fill in their details and answer some basic questions. On the tenancy page, you click send off a form and you'll be prompted to enter in the tenant's name and email address. 
If you'd like to send this form to multiple tenants, when you click send offer, just refresh the page, select offer form again, and just follow the steps. The tenant will be sent an email via Goodlord where they'll click on get started to be directed to a form to complete. This form has four sections to complete and you're gonna see this in the video now. So I'll complete section one and then move on to their personal details. And you're now gonna see this run through in the video. As you can see, it's really easy for the tenant to go in and complete all the details. And once they've completed the personal details, they'll just simply click next step and move on to source of income which you're gonna see in a second. Okay, so now they're gonna go on to source of income. They have a drop down menu to select the option here and then simply complete the rest of the details as we're doing in the video demonstration. And then finally, the tenant will complete their offer details, offer conditions, enter in their proposed move date, confirm the maximum monthly rental amount, and use the box below to enter any additional pertinent inf information. Once they click submit, you as the agent are gonna receive an email directly that you're gonna see on the screen shortly. So just go into your inbox, click on the email, and now we're gonna scroll through, and you can see here all the information that we've just input in as a tenant are gonna pull through for you to easily access in the, in the email. Okay, so next up, we're now actually gonna walk you through the updates we have made when you're creating an AST or a license on the platform. Once you've added and or searched for your property on your platform, you'll be directed to the tenancy profile page. Here, you will see the first change in creating a tenancy. Before, you were able to go on to create a new tenancy straight away. Now you need to select the tenancy type. When you click tenancy type, three options will appear, AST, license, and non-AST. We've added this feature because the tenant fee ban only affects ASTs and licenses. If you were to select non-AST, then you'd create a tenancy in exactly the same way as before. So we're gonna go through an AST. Enter in the monthly rental amount as usual, as we're doing now on the screen and the system will automatically calculate the security deposit as five weeks rent, where the weekly rent is calculated as per the law requirements. This is the monthly rent multiplied by 12 and then divided by 52. You are able to override the amount in the security deposit box, but as you'll see here, we will flag a warning message if the amount exceeds five weeks and you won't be able to save the details. If the security deposit amount is defaulted to less than five weeks on your platform, for example, four weeks, then this is the amount that will pull through as a default. Next up, we have the holding deposit. The tenant fee ban states that the tenants can only be charged a holding deposit of one week's rent as an upfront charge. To keep in line with this law, we have changed the name of the box from initial payment amount to holding deposit amount to clarify what is being charged at this stage. Furthermore, the system will default the holding deposit to be one week's rent. Just like the security deposit box, you can override the value that pulls through. However, we will flag it up if the amount you enter in does exceed the one week's rent. What's also important to note is that the holding deposit amount will be deducted from the tenant's moving monies, which is paid by the tenant once they've signed the tenancy agreement. We're now gonna go in and just enter in the terms of tenancy and select ourselves a start date. So we can now show you how to add a holding deposit extension. As part of the tenant fee ban, the holding deposit can only be held for 15 days unless an extension is agreed in writing by the tenant. Here you can see we've created a way for you to agree a new deadline upfront and the agreed date on this tenancy page. This will appear in the Good Lord Tenant Fee Ban Tenancy Guide that the tenant signs and can also be added to custom tenancy guides upon request. You can just see here now, if we scroll down, this is where you can select the tenant fee ban tenancy guide using the menu. As we've just mentioned, the tenant fee ban tenancy guide is available to agencies that use custom contracts. So you can actually start using this feature straight away. So we've now run you through the changes when creating an AST or license, but let's take a look at the tenant journey.
The tenant will go ahead and create their account as normal, as you see here, just entering in their password and then completing their payment details. They'll enter in their card number, complete the rest of the information and click Submit. Next, the tenant can easily view and download the tenancy guide. What they can also now do on the sign-up page is view a draft copy of their AST. The draft copy of the AST will also be attached in the email they receive from Goodlord alongside the How to Rent guide. Goodlord Tenancy Tenant Fee Band Guides will pull through wording about the tenant seeing this draft, which they sign and can be used as an audit by agents. This can also be added to custom tenancy guides upon request. Okay, so we're gonna move away from the tenant journey. and We're now gonna jump back in to another feature update we've made for agents, where you can see how to turn off debit card payments at the moving money stage. On the tenancy, head to the contracts and payments section. Here you'll see the toggle, allow debit card payments at the moving money stage. Simply click on the toggle to turn off the ability for the tenant to pay their moving monies with a debit card. This will mean that the bank transfer option will be the only option for the tenant to select when paying their moving monies. If you would like this toggle defaulted to no as a company setting, please contact your customer success manager. All right, so on to our final video of the day. Our final update is a video where we'll show you the changes we have made when you renew a tenancy on the platform. Select the tenancy. Here, you will now see the first change in renewing a tenancy. Before, you were able to go on Renew Tenancy straight away. Now you'll see once again the three options available, the AST, License and Non-AST. Select the option that you require and then just click Renew. The details from the original tenancy will pull through onto the Create AST Renewal page. If the original deposit amount was more than five weeks rent, the platform will automatically calculate the new deposit amount to be in line with the tenant fee ban legislation of five weeks rent. If the original deposit was more than five weeks rent, the system will highlight the amount that you will need to refund to tenants. You still have the option to add a renewal fee. A renewal fee can only be charged to the tenants if the tenants agreement was agreed before the 1st of June and the renewal fee was included in the original contract. Once you go through and complete all the rest of the tenancy details, scroll down and click Create AST Renewal to save your changes. Okay, so we've now run you through all the changes live on the platform. So what we're going to do now is actually jump into some questions before we do a quick recap on the resources available to you. So first up, we're actually going to go through some questions that were submitted uh, prior to the demo today. And then we're going to go through some live questions that have come in. So first up, the first question that we had, will the holding fee automatically be taken into account with the balance requested from the tenant whilst still displaying the full rental amount on the tenancy agreement? Yes, the holding deposit will automatically be deducted from the moving monies when the tenant reaches that stage. They reach that stage once they have signed a tenancy agreement on the good law platform. The rental amount itself will display on the tenancy agreement as this pulls from the rental box value when you're creating a tenancy. Okay, second question. Someone has asked, they would like to know if good lord are removing the six pound fee we normally charge the tenant, and if so, will we be redirecting that fee to the agent? Yes, the six pound platform fee has been removed and will not be redirected to the agent. We did a little bit of a recap on the payments earlier on, but I'm just gonna go through them again, just so you have all the details that you need. Good law, good lords will be absorbing the UK debit card cost of holding deposits under £400. You also have the flexibility to turn debit cards off at the moving money stage. Okay, so someone's asked, will the platform be changed automatically to be compliant with new regulation or do we need to do this manually? Nope, you don't need to worry about doing this yourselves. We will automatically be turning on all the compliant features ready for you to use by the 1st of June if you haven't already moved over to that setting. Okay, next up. So someone has asked, the fee ban comes into place from September the 1st in Wales. So will there still be a facility to change fees, to charge fees until then? So yes, if you are a Welsh agency, your platform will remain the same so that you can still charge fees. 
Okay, another great question. What happens if some of my tenancies are not executed by June the 1st and with charge fees? So in this particular instance, um, if your tenancy is not executed by the 1st of June and you have charge fees, you will still have to refund these fees, but don't worry, good Lord will be sending a list of these tenancies that this will apply to. Okay, another question. Can we charge for new locks as well as keys under the Tenant Fee Act? So if you actually have sort of specific questions about the legislation changes themselves, I would absolutely recommend you take a look at the ARLA website um, or our blog that we're going to run through at the end of today. However, if you are using the Good Lord and ARLA contracts, these are fully compliant and will provide specific clauses regarding these details. All right, so that was our pre-questions. We're now going to jump into a live question that's come through. We unfortunately have only got time for one today, so we're going to go through that and then we're going to do a quick wrap up. So this one's coming from Samantha Green. Will the Tenant Fee Ban Tenancy Guide only be available from the 1st of June? Good question, Samantha. Uh, the Tenant Fee Ban Tenancy Guide uh, is available when the Tenant Fee Ban setting is on. So if you've already got these changes enabled on your platform, this should be available. So if you do have that, just remember in the Tenancy Guide drop down menu, when you create a tenancy, it's labeled TFB Tenancy Guide. Great, so we've now gone through all our questions. We're now just going to do a quick recap of the resources that will be available to you to help support you through all of the changes. So first up, you can head to our compliance features landing page to check out all the details and view videos on the changes in action. For more details about the tenant fee ban legislation changes themselves, we'd absolutely recommend checking out our blog post, Q&A on the tenant fee ban with ARLA CEO David Cox, or even heading to the ARLA website itself. If you have any questions uh, on any of the product updates you've seen today, please email us at questions at goodlord.co and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Not only have we created compliant based features, we also have additional products to help provide revenue generating opportunities, such as Good Lord Switch, our void management product, where we will cover the void energy period, send the request notification to local council and water suppliers, whilst offering additional services such as broadband and TV. We also offer insurance products such as rent protection and tenants contents and liability insurance to both tenants and landlords to help you maximize revenue per let. And finally, you can also easily implement Good Lords deposit replacement insurance. So that's a recap on all of that. We'd, love, we'd like to thank you very much for all your time this morning and we will be sending out a recording of this webinar so you can access all the details that you need. And we hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining everybody.